The very first thing you want to do when you get one of these is basically learn how to take it apart. The very basics of it is basically removing that top cover. The whole cover comes off. It's really easy. Open it up. As you can see, it's already loose, but I'll show you where the mechanism is. Uh, the very first thing that people get confused about is how to remove the platen. That's the roller here. You need to remove this before the case will even come off. Um, I've even heard of people who've been looking at the actual set screws on the uh, platen and actually removed uh, the Allen screws. Uh, not a good idea. Um, it will actually work because you can remove this side, you can remove that side, and that'll actually get you up and running, but why do that when you can simply push that little lever, pull it up, push that little lever, pull it up, and it's off. The next thing you want to remove is that piece of aluminum. It just comes off. It's really, really simple. Uh, it's really, really loosely sitting in there, so just pull it out. Uh, the next thing you got to do is unhook the top cover. Mine's already unhooked, but I'll uh, get you in here that little tab, there's one on either side, get a screwdriver in there and pop it towards the back of this electric. So if you pull towards the back, it will unhook. You do that on both sides. This side's actually probably even easier to see. See that one there? Once you remove that, you're basically in. Um, at this point, you're going to be looking at it and saying, okay, um, this is nice, I can see inside, I can see in the back. Essentially everything except how do I get underneath this. Uh, really, really simple. Two latches for the cover and there's actually one latch holding down the whole bottom. It's that little tab right here. Pull it towards you to unlock it. Um, once it's actually unlocked, you can lift it. you can see everything underneath. The number one problem uh, that you'll get when you get one of those is that they're really gummed up. If they've been sitting for a while, the oil in them turn to goo and they don't type anymore, uh, or they'll actually just keep typing and firing on their own. Uh, there's a number of issues I'll be going over, but the main one is um, the keys and the actual fingers that are associated with the keys. Each key has a lever. Each lever has a spring, and the pivot point is right here and right below the little black spring you see a little pivot point all of these points need to be lubricated and when you get them they will be gummed up the next thing that you want to look at is the actual carriage itself the very very basics is you want to make sure that everything is moving freely um, for example when i got this one this part here which is actually attached to the eject mechanism for the cartridge was so gummed up this part would not return. So now that I've got it cleaned up it returns on its own and it's no problem. Uh, the other part is the actual uh, movement of the head. Um, when you're actually striking a letter uh, the, the type ball is actually going right here it's gonna wanna go up and what makes it do that is a cam that's actually located right here. Uh, that cam actually moves up and down depending on how this rod is actually twisted. Uh, as it twists, it actually sends the cam rotating this way and makes the head go up. Now all of that needs to be lubricated. The other important part that a lot of people look over without really realizing that it's important. Um, there's actually a mechanism, it's called the locking pawl. What it does is it actually locks the carriage in place. Your carriage always wants to return to the right. It's actually spring-loaded and it wants to return to the right at all times. The only thing keeping it back are the locking pawl and the locking rail which is behind here. This lever actually allows you to select between 12 space and 10 space and what that does is it actually rotates that locking paw lever actually there you go you can see the teeth right there those are the teeth for the locking paw now if I hold this there and I move this you can see 
it's rotating. Another important aspect of the uh, Selectric typewriter uh, is the actual type ball itself. There are actually two types of balls at this point. Um, there are 88 characters and 96 characters. The type head that is made for a Selectric or Selectric 2 will not physically fit on one that actually is designed for a 96 character. It won't let me. It doesn't physically fit. Now, two other important components, and I'll be going from right to left here uh, on the actual main shaft on the rear of the machine that is inside the housing uh, to the right of the uh, that white gear with the string. Um, those are actually cams. The right one is the actual um, return or backspace cam. Uh, so whenever you actually press enter or you press uh, backspace, uh, either your enter key or your backspace key, um, this it'll actually engage this cam. Uh, one of the main problems that you might find is that you're unable to actually return the carriage or uh, or even backspace. The one to the left is simply the space uh, cam. You just spray, press the space bar, um, you'll actually end up um, moving this cam. So if you look at this cam on the left, it actually does a full rotation. It actually engages the carriage every single time to go one space. Press the backspace. It actually engages it from one notch. If you press enter, it does a different rotation. These two cams are specifically used for moving the carriage and moving the carriage alone. They engage the actual carriage mechanism to either, you know, space or uh, or return. To the left of this, you have the spring gear, and it actually pulls the carriage forward. So as you can see, it's right here, it's right here, and this is connected to the carriage. So this is what wants to pull the carriage in this direction. It's actually connected to a spring-loaded mechanism. With the absence of the locking pole mechanism, the, the carriage will always want to go right. The other part that's fairly important is the clutch foot. This part here, as you can see there's a spring on it, an adjustment screw. There's actually a foot which you can actually sort of see underneath. That foot hits the clutch mechanism which is that spring there. It's, it's wound around the shaft. Uh, this shaft and this center shaft are not connected to other than through this spring. So when the foot engages the spring, it actually tightens the spring and gets both to be connected. Now this spring needs to be dry, You'd not no lubrication required there, and the foot needs to be adjusted so that there's at least a hundred thou between it and the spring. And you can adjust it using this screw here. You don't want to go too loose, you don't want to go too tight. If you put it too tight, it'll always engage and you'll have some problems. Um, if it's too loose, it won't engage. So if you're having carriage return problems, that would be the one place I would look. The second place I would look is the actual um, torque limiter spring, which is right here. As you can see, mine's actually been cut and rebent in a couple locations. And the reason for that is they stretch over time. Um, the tab at the bottom that it's attached to uh, has also been bent outwards just to give it a little bit more uh, resistance. Now as I said earlier if you're having a Selectric that is not able to return or uh, another problem you might see is the actual carriage is actually st sticking so you have to press enter a few times for it to actually make it all over there so it'll actually do it in steps. Um, there are two things to check. The number one thing I would check is definitely make sure that all your cams are located the number two thing I would check is to make sure that this spring is actually clean uh, and with no lube, uh, and that would be the clutch spring. I would check to make sure that the clutch foot adjust is adjusted properly, and I would obviously make sure that that spring is there and tensioned properly. The next place you want to look at is the actual belt itself. Uh, this belt actually connects to the motor. Well, this typewriter is all mechanical, so the only thing moving really is the motor rotating the shaft, and the shaft has actually got a bunch of different uh, components attached to it and connected uh, in order to drive different mechanisms. So this is the actual motor at the back of the machine. Uh, really, really straightforward. There's really not a lot in here. Uh, as you can see, it's connected to a switch, 
and it's actually driven by this power cord. So power cord goes to the switch, switch goes to the motor, and the motor is actually driving the belt. Now before I forget, there's one mechanism here, this spring. Uh, it's actually a leaf spring uh, that's actually always wound. And what that is, is actually it drives the, the other pulley here um, to pull the carriage the other direction. So what that does is it's always trying to pull the carriage to the right position. Now there's the crown jewel of the machine itself. The one thing that makes it work is this wiffle tree. Um, it is actually an old design and it used to be used in old mechanical computers. It is basically an analog to digital converter. So what it does is it allows you to move the head and the ball a specific amount either in tilting or in rotating. It's actually calibrated to pull uh, a tape which is a metallic tape which you can actually see in here which is this right here. Um, it's actually designed to rotate and pull this a specific amount to move the head a specific amount. If you want more information about how the Wiffle Tree works, uh, I would actually uh, look at a YouTube video and I'll post it in the description here. It is an engineering guy video by Bill Hammock. It actually explains how the Wiffle Tree works. Mine came with a broken rotate tape and I've actually got one on order right now. What the rotate tape does, it actually rotates uh, this disc at the bottom. Uh, in this case, what it also does is it allows you to have uppercase and lowercase. Um, typing uppercase and lowercase actually rotates this cam, which if there was a rotate tape, this would actually be taut and it would actually move back and forth. Um, as you can see, there is actually a cam that would push it one way or the other. Now these tapes are actually attached to the back right here. As you can see, there's, always, there's only one tape there, but the other tape goes underneath it and there's a bolt at the top that's actually fastened and holding the tapes. That tape would actually be wound all the way around to that gear and over to the other side to the other gear there, or pulley, sorry I keep saying gear. So that would actually all then go inside of the carriage and connect to that disc. Now replacing these is actually kind of tough, but it is doable. If you see one with a broken tape, um, tapes can go anywhere between five and fifteen dollars. Now I showed earlier that I had the actual uh, machine um, and you can actually lift up the whole machine itself and work on it from underneath as well. Uh, as you can see there's quite a bit of oil on a number of locations um, that you'll probably have to keep cleaning as you keep oiling it. Uh, oil will fall to the bottom. That's also one of the reasons why um, when you get them they'll have one of the an actual foam pad that's glued to the bottom. You can see some of the residue on the edges. Um, I would remove these right away especially the bottom one. Um, it, it will be impregnated with oil. Uh, they usually turn to tar. Now that you have the machine up it's the best time to actually start cleaning out some of the old grease and add some new grease. Um, in this case, you know, definitely um, look at your wiffle tree, which is right here. All those tabs, you'll find that there's quite a bit of grease on them, and I would clean them out. Uh, again, if you're having a problem where the, the machine won't type properly or type multiple characters or, you know, it'll just keep typing on its own. And um, you can see the actual rollers here. There's one roller here one roller here, those are what engage the wiffle tree and engage the, uh, the, the tilt and rotate tapes. So this whole thing actually moves uh, back and forth as it gets hit. And as you can see, if I move it, that tape is moving back and forth. The other thing that I originally had overlooked on this machine that actually uh, caused me quite a bit of issues uh, was this uh, actual mechanism right here. Um, as you're typing, this whole thing rotates and it was really gunked up with oil. So this whole length, uh, and you're looking at the aluminum one here, uh, I would definitely re-oil every single one of those. So this is the heart of the machine right here. This is the reverse or the underside of the keypad itself or the keyboard. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few bars that run horizontally. What those are is when you press a key, that key actually moves a combination of one or more of these and it actually ends up moving these contacts right here uh, up or down in different combinations depending on what's being pressed. Uh, that's what activates the wiffle tree. In fact, this, you can see this one's moving, this one moving, and I'm actually just activating these by hand 
Now, when it comes to the enter key, the space bar, the backspace, everything that be moving the other two cams, the one for either a return or the one for space, um, it will actually be moving these right here. Um, and these, same as they are connected for the wiffle tree, will be connected through the keyboard all the way down to the cams. These need to be oiled. They usually will get really, really sticky. Um, and all these bars have various points that need to be lubricated for any machines that have a problem with a space bar return um, Essentially if your machine is not returning the carriage properly I would do an overall on essentially everything that I mentioned here uh, these bars I would look at the cams, I would look at the clutch, and I would look at the actual uh, torque spring itself as well when it comes to adjustment. And don't forget the locking pawl. When I bought this machine, there were various problems with it. Uh, one of the main problems was that the actual rotate tape itself was unhooked from the real, uh, from the actual pulley right here. And it was actually laying inside and it was all coiled up and the attempt to actually remove it, it ended up breaking. Uh, the other problem it had it, it would actually not stay on the left. So no matter what I did to it, it always wanted to go to the right and it would never actually try to go this way. So the return didn't work, backspace didn't work, um, you couldn't really even move it back uh, manually. So the first thing I did obviously was remove the actual uh, rotate tape itself which was broken and in the way. Uh, to make sure that I could actually get this thing up and running before I spent any money on parts. That was not the only problem. After I was able to even get it to return, it still wouldn't stay. Um, oftentimes, if I played with it long enough, it would end up returning, bouncing off. The carriage would actually bounce off the left and then, you know, sail right a little bit and then stop. And sometimes it would actually go all the way back right. Um, and if I played with it enough, it would end up working somewhat okay, but it still stuck quite a bit. So obviously that locking pawl on the carriage itself was the problem and you know lubricating it definitely did help.